Creating content is at the heart of SEO, and sometimes people will take your content and try to pass it off as their own. If that happens, you need to know how to deal with it. Hopefully this won't happen to you, but if it does, this video will help you get the offending material taken down. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe to my channel. That way, when I release a new video, you'll get notified. In early 2017, I wrote a guest post on a well-known website in the blogging niche, which I'll call Website A. The article did very well, attracted a lot of comments and shares, and ranked on page one of Google for its keyword. But in June of 2021, I discovered that that article was now appearing on another website under someone else's name. The article was not just plagiarized, it was word for word and image for image, an identical copy of my article. The only thing different about the article was that the author was now someone else. In this video, I'll show you the steps I took to have that article removed. But before getting into the details, what is DMCA and what rights does it give you? The Digital Millennium Copyright Act 1998 is United States copyright law that gives effect to a 1996 treaty of the World Intellectual Property Organization. DMCA makes it illegal to produce or disseminate content, technology, devices or services that are the copyright of someone else. DMCA is focused on where the content is hosted, not where you are located. For example, you might be located in India, but if your web host is located in the USA, then your content is protected by DMCA. And even if your web host is located outside the US, your web host may still honor a DMCA takedown request. There are two aspects of US copyright law that are relevant here. Firstly, under US copyright law, a person automatically owns all the rights to work they create. Your copyright comes into existence the moment you create a piece of original work. When that work is fixed, for example, by publishing it on a website, your copyright is created. In the words of the US Copyright Office, copyright protection in the United States exists automatically from the moment the original work of authorship is fixed. Secondly, no one else acquires any rights to that work unless you grant it to them through an explicit written agreement. And this is made clear in the following statement by the website FindLaw. A copyright owner's exclusive rights, either in whole or in part, can be transferred to another party, but it must be in writing and signed by the copyright owner to be considered valid. So what are the rights and obligations of web host providers under DMCA? Under the DMCA, internet service providers, such as web hosts, are shielded from copyright infringement liability as long as they meet certain conditions. The most important of these conditions are one, the ISP must not have actual knowledge that the material or activity is infringing copyright. And two, the ISP must, upon obtaining such knowledge or awareness, act expeditiously to remove or disable access to the material. In other words, as soon as a web host becomes aware that it is hosting material that infringes someone's copyright, it must take steps to remove that content. Otherwise, the web host loses the protection from liability that DMCA gives to internet service providers. So with that out of the way, let's get to the nitty gritty. I mentioned earlier that I wrote a guest post in 2017 that appeared on a popular website in the blogging niche. In late 2020, the owner sold that website to someone else. I became aware of this because I noticed that my backlink from that website had dropped out. My name still appeared as the author of the article, but the owner of the website, whom I will call person A, had removed the link to my website. Now, when you clicked on my name, it redirected to a web page advertising person A's online blogging course. I had done a lot of original research for that article, which was a guide on how to write introductions to blog posts. So naturally, I was not happy that someone else was now using the article entirely for their own purposes. I wrote to him 
asking him to please restore the link to my website or to remove the article from his website. But I never heard back from him. Then, a few months later, I was researching something about blog post introductions and my article appeared in the search results. Only this time, I was no longer the author. The article was now being claimed as the work of someone else. This was not person A, however, but someone else, who I will call person B. Not only that, the original URL of my article now redirected to another website, which I will call website B. What follows are the steps I took to have the infringing material removed. I have divided the process into three steps. One, assembling the evidence. Two, identifying the web host whose servers contained the infringing material. And three, submitting a DMC takedown request. Step one, assembling the evidence. I started putting together the evidence that I needed to show that I was the author of the article. But I had a problem that most people in this situation probably won't have. If you look at standard DMCA takedown notices, they all have two key requirements. One, the URL of the infringing material, and two, the URL of the original authorized version. My problem was that even the URL of the original version now had someone else as the author. How could I prove that I was the author when there was no online version of the article with me as the author? Well, fortunately, there was a solution. There's a very useful website called Wayback Machine at www.archive.org, which takes snapshots of every single web page on the internet at various times in the page's history. And fortunately for me, Wayback Machine had taken a snapshot of my article on 10th April 2018. I took screenshots of that web page as it appeared on 10 April 2018 and I also saved it as a PDF. I had one other source of evidence that I was the author of the original article. When you write a guest post, it's often a requirement that the author responds to any comments that readers leave on the post, and that was the case with my article. The article had accumulated 59 comments, so I had lots of automatic email notifications telling me there was a new comment that required a response. I took screenshots of eight of these emails as further evidence that I was the author of the article. I then used a free online tool called Who Hosts This to find the internet service provider that was hosting the new website where my article now appeared under someone else's name. Next, I contacted the web host. Over the course of several emails, I sent them the six pieces of information that you need in a DMCA takedown notice. One, the URL of the infringing version of your article. Two, the URL of the original authorized version of your article, or evidence that it once existed in the form of screenshots, email notifications, etc. Three, a statement of good faith belief. Four, a statement of accuracy and authority. Five, contact info for the complainant. And six, the signature of the complainant. Shortly after my third email, I received a reply from the web host informing me that the infringing material would be removed within 24 hours. It had taken just five days from the date of my first email to the web host to have the infringing material removed. A few days after the stolen article was removed from website B, I received an email from person B. He was writing to let me know that the article had been removed. But it was clear from his email that he believed he was doing me a favor and that he believed he owned the copyright to my article. But was he right? Do you lose copyright when you publish a guest post on someone else's website? And when you purchase a website, do you automatically acquire copyright to the content on that website? Let's look at what US copyright law says about these two issues. The first issue is what happens to copyright when you write a guest post. The person who copied my article to another website and published it under his own name may have believed that I had lost copyright in the article once I published it on someone else's website as a guest post. But there's an article on the website FindLaw 
that clearly states that you only lose copyright in material created by you when you expressly transfer that copyright to another person. Otherwise, it remains your copyright. The second issue is what happens to copyright when you purchase a website. The person who purchased the website where my guest post was originally published may have believed that by purchasing that website, he acquired copyright to any content that was on that website when he purchased it. Now, he probably did acquire the copyright to any content that was created by the person who sold him the website. But what about guest posts? Did he acquire copyright to the guest posts that had been published on that website? I'm not a lawyer, but my understanding from the article on Find Law suggests that he didn't acquire the copyright to my guest post. The Find Law article clearly states that under US copyright law, no one else can acquire any rights to your work unless you grant it to them through an explicit agreement. I never signed any such agreement either with the original owner of the website or with the person who purchased that website. If you want to see copies of the emails I sent and DMCA templates you can use for your own takedown, just head over to the article this video is based on. The link is in the notes for this video or you can go to robpowellbizblog.com forward slash DMCA hyphen takedown. I hope this video has been useful and I'll see you next time.